You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, there's an antiviral drug that's been around for 10 years that is now showing promise in the treatment of COVID-19. Early data that was released Wednesday from a global study revealed that patients who were given this drug were less likely to die and recover faster. However, there was another study released the same day in the British medical journal, The Lancet, which found no clinical benefits to this particular drug. Joining us right now is Dr. Taysen Bell, critical care and infectious disease specialist at the University of Virginia, which was part of the trials. Dr. Bell, so first of all, what is this drug uh, that Dr. Fauci was addressing yesterday that people are saying is potentially promising? Sure. So um, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so this drug is called Remdesivir. And uh, it's a drug that actually targets a part of the coronavirus that it uses to replicate itself. So the way the coronavirus works, it gets inside your own cells and then it hijacks your cell machinery to make other copies of itself. So this drug actually targets a, a crucial part of the virus that it uses to make copies of itself. And inhibiting that has shown that it has a clinical benefit. Uh, now, you mentioned two of the things that we saw that were a benefit. So one was the time to recovery, meaning um, how long it took for you to get off of oxygen if you needed oxygen or to leave the hospital or go back to your usual activity. That was decreased by four days. And that's a big deal for people who are suffering from coronavirus and the people treating them. And then there's a mortality benefit as well, too, um, that's decreased from about 12 to 8 days or uh, uh, 12 to 8 percent. Uh, so um, it's a modest step, but it is a positive step. And, um, and to be honest, I feel like a lot of the news about uh, the coronavirus is, is really negative and it's feel like we've been getting just hit um, time after time with bad news. But this is a, a significant uh, positive step. Explain to folks, this is not a vaccine. No, it is not a vaccine. This is a therapy or a drug that's aimed to, to treat the, the uh, coronavirus that makes your symptoms better and can improve mortality. All right. So, uh, and of course, so the other day we had uh, a doctor from Meharry Medical College that working on an antiviral drug. Uh, and again, a uh, again, totally different than we're talking about a vaccine as well. Uh, and so, how do we how do we deal with what the British are saying, and then of course what Fauci said yesterday? Uh, to the Lancet article, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Right. So um, the main difference between these two trials. Um, were um, how many patients they were able to enroll. So the Lancet study was widely reported as a, a negative study, but that's kind of oversimplifying it. Um, they actually had to stop their enrollment um, about half according to their target. They wanted to get um, a certain amount, but they couldn't enroll because the cases were actually going down in Wuhan at that point, which is a good thing, but they had to stop the trial. Uh, so they weren't able to achieve what we call in science statistical power. And the best way I can explain that is to uh, give you an example of uh, my daughter, who's two years old. A couple of weeks ago, um, I was drinking a cup of hot tea. She said she wanted some. And so I put some cool water in it uh, to tone it down. And, and uh, it was lukewarm. And then I gave her the cup of tea. She took a sip and she said, Daddy, it's hot. Uh, well, because she's only seen those two temperatures, regular temperature and the lukewarm, she doesn't understand what lukewarm means. She can only tell that it's that it's hot. Um, but, you know, you and I who are adults, we drink in all sorts of different temperature of liquids. So we can actually tell um, what that Dimberton temperature is between hot and lukewarm. Uh, so because we have more samples we're able to have a little bit better discretion in how we describe something. So this study that came out of China, because they weren't able to get enough samples, you weren't really able to tell the difference between what's lukewarm and hot. Um, and the difference with the new trial that came out from the NIH is that we did get enough samples to be able to tell that this is an actual true difference. So um, ex explain to us the coronavirus and, and how, and, and people who are, who are losing a sense of taste and smell. I mean, right. how, how does that work? So this has been one of the fascinating things about the virus, and uh, we kind of learn something new about it every single day. And there's thousands of articles that come out on a weekly basis about it. So there's still, this is still theory, but what it seems to uh, do is infect some parts of the uh, nervous system um, that control uh, your sense of taste and your sense of smell. 
Um, these nerves are actually very close to your nasal passages. So if you um, go back in your nose, not the part that you can see, but if you go even further behind where you can see um, where uh, your brain actually comes pretty close to that. And some of the nerves that, that feed the brain are very close to that as well, too. And so there are some people who think that the coronavirus can actually go through uh, one of those thin bones that separates your nose from your brain. It can actually directly infect those cells in your nervous system and cause you to lose that sensation. Uh, we're not sure if that's actually the case, but that's been the, the theory and has been shown in some animal models. All right, then, Dr. Tayson Bell, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thanks for having me. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré. Uh, thanks for the Black Surgeon General, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. John Hope Bryan, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California. Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin. Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick. Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams. Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens. Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kip Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Spring, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Anna Bernice Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senior and Amy Klobuchar. Mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Brayboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division Strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she's a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand, Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, Merida Bennett College. Corner Michael Fowler is the mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist, Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon Madugo, president elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You get the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.